All right, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free chicka, chicka, Learning. And in this video, we're gonna pursue part two of our rigid body kinematics and velocity analysis using the instantaneous center of rotation or also known as the instantaneous center of zero velocity. And in this problem, we have this rod, which is kind of like a ladder resting upon a hill and um, it's sliding down. Point B down here at the bottom is moving at two meters per second to the right. And the length of this ladder or this rod is 10 meters. And what I'd like to do is find the angular velocity of the rod AB, as well as the velocity of point A of this rod. And we did this problem already once using relative velocity analysis. And you can click on the link right there in that upper right corner if you want to see that. Just showed you how to do this problem with the relative velocity equation and here in this video I'm going to show you how to do this exact same problem using the instantaneous center of rotation or zero velocity and really the idea of the instantaneous center of rotation is to find that point at a specific instant that represents an essentially an axis of rotation for the entire rigid body and you can analyze it as if the entire rigid body is just just rotating about that point. And so what one of the first things that we have to do is locate the instantaneous center of rotation or that point that has zero velocity. But before we do that, I hope you take a minute to subscribe, like and share this video and uh, help me keep making more videos. You know what I'm saying? All right. So here we go. The first thing I like to do is draw a schematic. And I went ahead and did that right here. I just redrew the rod as a stick figure. So I'll call this boom. And this in particular is to locate the instantaneous center of rotation here. I do know that point B here is has a velocity that's horizontal. This velocity at point B, I believe, was two meters per second, yes. I know that the edge of the ladder here at A is always moving along the incline, the 60 degree incline. And I, I could reason, I, just from looking at it, I'm, I'm guessing that A is gonna be moving down as B moves to the right. And maybe I don't know that for sure, but at least I know that point A is moving parallel to that 60 degree line. So I'll assume that I don't know the direction of point A for now, and I'll show you how to conclude that it is actually moving down. This, we know at least is moving parallel to to that 60 degree incline there and I will represent that direction with this blue dotted line. The velocity is pointing either up or down on that blue dotted line there. All right. Now, if I know the direction of the velocity vectors in order to locate the instantaneous center of rotation, one of the first things I want to do is draw a line perpendicular to the tail of each vector or each velocity vector. So my VB is two meters per second. So my line perpendicular would look like this and I will use the color green. This, okay, there's my line perpendicular VB. And then in the same way, I'm gonna draw a line perpendicular to A. Wow, with this ruler, I get to like draw some accurate lines. You know what I'm saying? Dang, it's, the power of an accurate drawing is so good right here. So this is my line perpendicular to the velocity vector here at A. Boom, like this. And oh man, I totally lucked out in that intersection. It's almost like I had it planned. I did it. I really did it right here where the two lines intersect. This is my instantaneous center of rotation. It also has zero velocity. What I do know from here is that if I have, if AB is a rigid body that's only rotating, well, shoot, the only way that VB can be pointing to the right is if the angular velocity about the instantaneous center of rotation is going counterclockwise like this. So this would be omega AB. And if omega AB is going counterclockwise, well, shoot, the velocity of A can only be one direction, again, in pure rotation. It would be in this direction here. This would be VA. Hey, there we go. All right. And so now I, wow. So I have a lot of really good information, okay? And I can use my relationships 
my rotation relationships or equations. And so I know that, well, the relationship between VB and omega AB, VB, the magnitude of VB is equal to uh, omega AB, the angular velocity, times the distance from the axis of rotation to that point. So that would be to RB from the instantaneous center of rotation. And that distance is this length right here. This is RBIC. And similarly, the distance from the instantaneous center of rotation to A is RAIC. And what we've done is reduce this to really a problem of geometry. You know, I know that the length of the rod here is 10 meters, and I really got to figure out some angles so I can determine these distances or these radius radii <laughs> who knows right anyway the distance from the instantaneous center to b right and so for instance here va is omega a b times r a i c and what we normally do is we're going to use geometry to find these radial distances from the instantaneous center and then we can use the known velocity at b to find omega a b here and once we have omega a b we can plug it into the v a equation to get v a down here so the thing that we need to do next is really work on a bunch of geometry and to do that we're going to do a little bit more work here in terms of geometry. Oh, I forgot to mention. Well, let's go back and look at this drawing right here. But I forgot to mention that, again, I forgot to mention I, that this distance right here is actually four meters. That's four meters. And so we know that this is 60 degrees here. So one, some, some angles that we need, if I go back to this, some of the angles that I'd like to get in my problem here is I would like to know what this angle is right here. And goodness, if I know that angle and if I can figure out maybe what this angle is right here, I can probably use law of sines or law of cosines uh, to determine those radial distances. All right. Once I have these two purple angles, you know, I'll be able to get this last angle right here because, you know, it's a triangle, right? So I add up all those angles and it's, uh, it's 180 degrees. So let's see what we can do here. Um, goodness. So I do know, let me draw this in blue. I think the toughest part about these kinds of problems is just the geometry. Continue this blue line here, right there. Well, I know this is four meters right there. I know that if I focus here like this, if I draw a vertical line, oh, maybe too many colors. Let me use blue here, right here, this vertical line. And I know that at least for the hill down here, this angle relative to the horizontal, this angle right here is 60 degrees. That was given in the problem. And you can kind of see that 90, 30, 60, 90 triangle happening. So this angle right here is 30 degrees like this. Uh-huh. I know that's 30, okay, and let's see here, what else do I know? I know that's four meters. Let's see, I know that this angle right here is 120 degrees, like that, okay, working out some geometry. And, oh, I've got one side, uh, another side, and I have this 120, so using this blue and black triangle, I can use the law of signs. I know that, let's see, sine of 120 degrees and the side opposite that 120 is 10 meters is equal to, hmm, let's see, oh, this angle right here, I'll put in, goodness, I'll put in orange, double orange right here, a lot of colors. And I, in fact, let me call that angle, shoot, I don't know what I called it before, but I'll call it phi, I'll call it phi, and that angle would be the sine of phi over four meters and using this ratio i can determine what phi is and from here this would tell me that phi is equal to 20.27 degrees and that means this angle right here which why not I'll call that angle gamma that angle gamma let's see phi plus gamma plus 120 
should equal 180 degrees and so gamma is 39.73 degrees ah yes okay so I'm getting closer here and if gamma right there is 39.73 degrees well shoot I can look at this right here this should be 90 and so 90 minus 39.73 is 50.27 degrees there and what else do I know oh shoot all snap right here I know that this right here is 90 and I know phi is 20.27 so 90 minus 20.27 here 90 minus 20.27 is 69.73 degrees yes 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 uh let's see here from the purple angles let me put it on the side over here oh, i'll close it up yes like this so from the purple angles i know that the inside this triangle this larger triangle here uh, that incorporates my instantaneous center of rotation in that 10 meter length 69.73 plus 50.27 plus I'll call this angle beta is equal to 180 degrees and so beta is beta is 60 degrees hey look at how that turned out and so then from the law of sines I could determine RBIC and RAIC I would get that sine of 60 over 10 meters is equal to the sine of 69.73 degrees over R B I C and this is equal to the sine of 50.27 degrees over R A I C and just from these ratios I will be able to figure out that R B I C is equal to uh, I'm gonna say 10.83 meters and R A I C is 8.88 meters and now now that i have these all i'm left to do is just plug and chug and solve if i if i come back to this right here i know all my dimensions and so now this from four i'm gonna solve and this would tell me that omega a b is VB divided by RBIC, which is this 2 meters per second, divided by 10.83 meters. This is equal to 0 0.185 radians per second. We already know that it is counterclockwise like this, so I feel good about that. And then I can use my other velocity relationship. I can use this VA, this second relationship here, to find VA and VA is equal to omega AB times RAIC, which would be 0.185 radians per second times 8.88 meters. And this will give me 1.64 meters per second. And we also know the direction already because we know the direction of omega. We know that this will be 60 degrees down the incline. All right. And these are my final answers for this rigid body motion and using the instantaneous center of rotation. All right. So hopefully that was useful and you are now able to do both methods and take it easy let me know if you have any questions in the comments below structure